Hi, so welcome. This is a little tutorial on a redstone circuit, well, in fact, two redstone circuits uh, that can be used to make something like this, which is like a gauntlet style run. Let me just patch that in. That's uh, spoilers. Um, essentially, this is an archery training course to get through as fast as you can. I'll show you what you do first. You run through, you shoot both the buttons and that allows the door to be opened move through to the next section hit all three buttons and then you can go upstairs and the iron door is now open and then this is the last section i haven't finished building it i think i started this map about a year ago but uh, you would have arrows shooting at you or like, arrows of slow i think um and this also releases the zombies who were caged in. And you've got to hit all the targets and get across as quick as you can uh, before dying. And normally this is always set to evening, but uh, it's not working properly at the moment. So essentially, to allow this to happen, you have to have a couple of things going on. Now, firstly, is the circuit down here that allows for the redstone button to be pressed and the signal to stay on because you can't shoot a lever it won't do anything as far as i know um so you need it to act like a lever otherwise the door won't stay open so you have this little circuit here which when you shoot it moves the pistons and changes the output so you have one of those for each button and they move uh, they both output to an AND gate, essentially. So both signals have to be active for the output to be uh, on. If one of them isn't, you can see that will turn on and that will stop the output from doing anything. Uh, that's the basic principle of how this works. Uh, I'll go through and show how these are made in a second. But before we get to that, there is one crucial thing uh, in the fact that if you may have noticed that the but the arrows despawn as soon as they hit anything now that's quite crucial uh, because if they are off which i'll show you quickly now then the arrow sticks into the button and keeps it depressed essentially um which you can't have because then the signal as you can see is permanently on you need it to go off for the pistons to activate so you either need to collect them or you need to wait for them to despawn which just isn't very practical so in order to rectify that we use a command block with this command and have it always active um i'll paste that in the description so nice and easy took a while to figure that out but it's all right so here are the circuits in fact i'll show you first how they sort of work together when you have more than two because here you have three so you need to implement another AND gate so you have all three outputting to the sort of uh, lever translation I guess um, to make the output stay constant for when the button is clicked and then re uh, resprung back up uh, two of them go to one AND gate and the output to that will link up with the third button to a final AND gate and that way the door will only open if all three have been activated. You can't have any number of combination of just two of them, it needs all three. Same will happen when you uh, have four, so there's one, two, three, four here and it's just a little bit more complicated. You have two of them going in to their lever conversion to one AND gate, then that AND gate output goes to another and gate with a the third button and then finally another and gate with the fourth button you see it just sort of trails into a, one output and then that would uh, open the next door or gate or whatever you so wish and those are clicking because they should be shooting they only get activated once that has been sprung from the previous section so the way you make this the first part is the redstone that makes a button essentially into a lever and that is done here so what you need to do is dig a two by two 
little trench and pop a torch in. Then you build a nice little three block right angle, sticky piston each side, redstone on top and torch at each end. There we are. So your output is this one, which will be here, let's say. This is your, that's your output. Let's just put that as a block to show the illumination. And then your input is up here on top. You will just have anything coming in and activating it. And once that's, uh, sorry, it took me a second to remember what, it needs to be an on off, obviously like a button. It can't just be a constant signal, hence why the arrows need to despawn, otherwise it doesn't do anything. But once, say if you had that as a lever or a button, that will just slide back and forth. And as you can see, changes the output state to either always on or always off, which is very nice. So that's that, nice and simple. Then those go to the AND gates, which you can use for any number of things. You know, any two outputs, both need to be activated. You make secret doors where you have to uh, have two things activated in order to open. So this is very simple as well. You just have three blocks along with a torch in the center and two either side on top. Then you have your two inputs, which you know can be from anything. And this is your output here. And we'll signify that with a redstone lamp. And I like to put redstone lamps on top so you can easily visually see which input has been activated. So you can see here, if the left one has, then that one goes out, nice and easy. So you can have that above ground almost, um, if you did a little redstone torch ladder. There you go. So you need both of them to be on, and then that will... What have I messed up here? Oh, you need the redstone in between. Sorry, completely forgot that. Redstone in between, very important, otherwise it doesn't work. There you are. Now they both need to be on for the output to be active. If one of them is off, or both of them are off, the output will not be active. And that's that. Right, so let me know any ideas or uh, applications for this that you may have already done or have in mind down in the comments. Uh, it'd be great to hear. See you in the next one.